we need to talk about pollution. Not the greenhouse gases we're dumping into our atmosphere, but the plastics we're filling our land and our seas with. But the thing is, those greenhouse gases and those plastics are actually deeply connected, and plastic is wreaking havoc on our planet's health and on our health. So what's driving our addiction to plastics? How's all this linked to fossil fuels? And most importantly, how do we clean up our mess? I'm Adam, a climate scientist with a PhD from Oxford, sharing what you need to know about climate change. And today, I don't actually want to talk about climate change, at least not directly. I want to discuss plastic pollution. And there's a reason I want to talk about this right now, which is because right now the world has a unique opportunity to tackle this problem. Now I know what you're thinking. Why is your hair so floofy? Oh, that's actually not at all what I thought you'd be thinking. But it's down to a strict regimen of not getting it cut. But any other thoughts, perhaps about plastics and climate change? Oh right, yeah. So are plastics a major driving force of climate change or not? And the answer is no. At least not when you compare them to really big sources of emissions, like farming or power generation. But plastic pollution is a big deal that's deeply interwoven with the fossil fuel industry. And the exact same organisations and strategies that are trying to stop us from cleaning up climate change are also working to stop us cleaning up plastics. Ah, these sound like important links that I, a viewer, want to learn much more about. So I'll watch till the end and like, comment and subscribe to indicate my engagement. Thank you viewer for this real and authentic interaction. You're welcome Plastic Adam. Now before we get started, just a quick note that this video is made with support from the Melior Foundation. But as ever, I'm not going to be selling you stuff you don't need through product placements or monetization, and I've got full responsibility for the content of this video. Okay, so let's start off by talking about why plastics are actually bad. Why? I mean, everyone knows plastics are bad, sure, but honestly, it's hard to appreciate just how bad they are. You see, plastic is an amazing material. I thought you were going to explain why plastic is bad. Right, and I'm getting to that part. The thing is, plastic is tough, like super tough. Plastic is designed to last, basically forever. It can take anywhere from 20 to 500 years to decompose. I mean, for context, this was fashion 500 years ago. It's giving snatched waste and lead poisoning. Well, the point it's giving is that 500 years is a really long time. Okay, so if plastics are so durable and awesome, what makes them so awful? Well, lasting decades to centuries is great if it's actually for products which are meant to last decades to centuries but so many of the plastics we produce are single use, which means they're only used once. Exactly. Stuff like plastic cutlery, straws, bags, packaging, and then after that one single use, they're chucked out. And then there's stuff like fast fashion with synthetic materials, which is only worn a handful of times before that's chucked, if it's worn at all. And we're talking about vast amounts of chucked out plastic. Since the 1950s, we've created about nine billion tonnes of plastic, about seven billion tonnes of which have ended up as primary waste. I can't even begin to visualise that number. Well, it's about the weight of the Empire State Building. Whoa, that is a lot. I wasn't actually finished. It's about the weight of the Empire State Building times 300 Thousand. And we're back to me not being able to visualise it again. So what are we doing with all this plastic waste? I'm guessing it's not all getting recycled. It's barely getting recycled at all. Imagine these 10 bits of plastic represent all the trash we've created. We get rid of two of them by burning them, not great for the environment, and we recycle just one of them. So what happens to the seven that are left over? It's not great news. So five of them, that's half the total, end up in landfill. The remaining two end up all over the place, uncontrolled dump sites and in nature, on land and in water. In fact, every single year around 20 million tonnes of plastic, that's about 60 Empire State Buildings worth, end up in lakes, rivers and seas. You're really sticking to this Empire State Building unit of measurement, aren't you? Well, look, if you can think of a better way to capture the vast scale of plastic pollution, then drop it in the comments. 
Pretty unsurprisingly, all these skyscrapers worth of plastic are wreaking havoc with the environment. It's choking wildlife, damaging soils, and poisoning water supplies. And when plastics break down into tiny parts, those microplastics you've heard about, they can mess up everything from the water cycle to how living things grow. And since we humans happen to live on this planet, all these problems are our problems too, messing up our food and our water. Now, Maybe despite all of this, you're still thinking, who cares about plastic in our stupid environment? To which I would say this, there's plastic in your stupid body too. Okay, well now I'm concerned because I happen to like my stupid body. Lots of plastic products contain endocrine disrupting chemicals, EDCs, in other words, chemicals that mess up our hormones. These have been linked to everything from cancer risks to infertility. Then there's the forever chemicals in some products, including the PFAs that everyone's been going on about. And well, fair enough to go on about them because these forever chemicals don't break down naturally and so stick around forever. Right, they've been found in our blood, in our breast milk, even in unborn fetuses. And while we're talking about plastics ending up in places that we don't want plastics to end up, we really need to talk about balls. Balls? That's right, balls. A study that investigated whether testicles could contain microplastics found these tiny plastic fragments in every single testicle studied, which honestly, I would have expected more men's rights activists to be up in arms about. This testicle plastic is notable to me for two reasons. Firstly, this could be having profound effects on fertility, and it's a concerning sign of how our society's addiction to plastics is outweighing how we produce protect such basic bodily functions. And secondly, this is the first time in all these years of doing Climate Adam that I've ever used the word testicle. Well, let's hope it's the last too. Such a prude. Okay, so two completely unrelated questions. Firstly, what even is plastic? And secondly, what does all this have to do with fossil fuels? Well, you're never going to believe this, but the answers to those questions aren't unrelated. Well, no one could have predicted that. The thing is, plastics are fossil fuels. They're mostly made from oil, and honestly, this information is so important that it needs to be memed. The relationship between plastics and fossil fuels isn't set to change anytime soon. Or rather, it is set to change in that it's going to get worse. Some projections see global plastic production doubling or even tripling in the next 25 years. Now, as we shift to clean energy and electric vehicles, that should mean oil demand gradually drops. But the production of petrochemicals and plastics is going against that trend. It's expected to be one of the largest drivers of growing oil demand up to 2050. Okay, so plastic production sucks for the climate because it's tied to fossil fuel production. Right. But are plastics themselves causing climate change? They actually are. Plastic production causes about 5% of global emissions. That doesn't sound like a huge amount. Well, it might not sound it, but it actually is pretty huge. While it's not as much as the really big climate causes like farming or power plants, it's more than all the global emissions of flying, for example. And if emissions from plastic were a country, that'd be the world's fourth biggest greenhouse gas producer. Okay, so plastics suck. I guess we need better recycling. Well, getting better at recycling would be great. But recycling plastics is just hard. There are so many types of plastic and sorting them is hard. Then actually processing these plastics is hard. And the quality of the materials you end up with is often not very good, meaning reusing it is hard. And then of course, processing the absolutely vast amounts of plastics that we're talking about is, let me guess, hard. Well, I was going to go with difficult, but sure. So the truth is, we just can't recycle our way out of this mess. We need to actively reduce the amount of plastic we're using. So you mean we all have to become like zero waste influencers? Well, that would be awesome, but let's be real. It's not going to happen anytime soon. So we're going to need to change the systems. What, you mean some kind of treaty for plastics for the entire globe? That is exactly what I mean. Let's talk about the Global Plastic Treaty. Oh. Yeah, 
Let's. The Global Plastic Treaty is being developed by the United Nations Environment Programme. The goal is for 175 countries to work together to tackle the plastic crisis, and it could be implemented as early as 2025. Okay, but what could be implemented as early as 2025? Well, that's very much still the question. The fifth session of negotiations is happening this year from the 25th of November to the 1st of December in Busan, Korea, and a lot still hangs in the balance. There are the high ambition countries like Rwanda and Norway who are hoping to eradicate plastic pollution by 2040, and there have been calls to slash plastic production, promote reuse, eliminate the worst chemicals, and ban the worst plastic offenders like packaging and single-use items. So then the emphasis would be on reducing the amount of harmful junk we create rather than just recycling. Well, that sounds entirely sensible. I mean, I'd be amazed if anyone could possibly object to that. Well, prepare to be amazed then, because remember, plastics are produced by fossil fuel companies. But when have fossil fuel companies ever obstructed environmental progress for the sake of their own enormous profits? So yeah, I remember literally all the time. Right, and to avoid meaningful action to protect people and planet from plastics, they're using the very same tactics they've been using to stop us stopping climate change. To stall progress, they've been cramming the negotiations with lobbyists. In fact, their lobbyists outnumber national delegations, scientists, and indigenous peoples. Just like all the lobbyists at the climate negotiations this year and last. And then fossil fuel companies have been pushing to change the narrative. Instead of cutting down the problem at its source, arguing we can just magic away the vast amounts of waste with recycling. Just like how fossil fuel companies have been pushing carbon capture and storage instead of you know, stopping burning fossil fuels. Exactly. And for the record, carbon capture and storage and plastic recycling are absolutely important parts of the solution, but they are also small parts of the solution, and no replacement for actually cutting down on pollution in the first place. Oh, and then on top of all this, polluting companies are setting up friendly sounding groups, pushing plastic reuse and recycling while opposing production limits. <laughs> classic greenwashing. You see, the problem with pollution, whether it's plastics or greenhouse gases, is that we're producing way too much of it. And in both cases, the problem boils down to our dependency on fossil fuels. And look, if you can live the life of a plastic-free influencer, that's awesome. But for our environment and for us, we need to get our whole society to kick its plastic habit. And that's why we ought to be paying close attention to what happens with the Global Plastic Treaty. And look, I mentioned a minute ago how carbon capture and storage is a bit like recycling. Important, but also kind of rubbish. Well, here's why. Okay, until next time. Bye. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> Getting through this bit is hard.